Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Hi, hello -y. my name is Loey, and today, once again, we are scrolling through the scary side of TikTok to watch 15 videos that crawled onto my For You page this week and into my brain to give me nightmares. But before we get into the scary videos, I wanna say a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Mist Play, my new favorite way to play games on my phone. And through Mist Play, I can earn rewards for playing fun games. And the rewards that you can earn just by playing games through Mist Play are amazing. Gift cards to Amazon, Target, even DoorDash and Sephora. I've tried a couple of different games from Mist Play so far, but my two Two favorites are Dragonscape, which I've seen a ton of ads for but never downloaded, and now I get to play through Misplay and earn rewards just for like tending to my cute little island and playing with dragons, as well as Stormshot Isle of Adventure. And I'm not joking, I have played both of these games a ton. I am well on my way to redeeming an Amazon gift card for myself, and I'm so excited. And best of all, it's free to download. Go to misplay.com slash Loey and get 200 points points upon signing up, as well as 50 extra points when you use my code LOWY50. And those points can be used towards your first gift card. Once again, that's misplay.com slash LOWY and code LOWY50 for 50 extra points upon signing up. It's literally such a win-win. Let me know what you guys end up spending your points on. What kind of gift card do you get? I'm nosy, I wanna know. And now let's get into the scary videos. Okay, I want to start off with a series of TikToks about a dead mall in Connecticut. The Crystal Mall in Waterford, Connecticut has been thrown into the spotlight on TikTok because of a series of videos posted by user Robert Tolpe. Now, here's the thing, is Robert posted these videos of the mall and they're super creepy in their own right. We're gonna watch those first. But because of that, people followed up with their own stories about this mall. And apparently, it's kind of been this weird liminal nightmare space for a long time. In the first video that Robert posted, the mall is almost entirely empty. He says himself, guys, I'm at a dead mall right now. However, the people that are in the mall are all listening to a voice over the intercom system as it tells them, don't move. I'm at a dead mall, guys. Everyone just stopped moving, like froze in their tracks. I can't find the exit. I can't, I can't find it. Everything looks the same and nobody's here. It just keeps repeating don't move over and over and over again and everyone's still frozen. I'm trying to find the exit. 15? What do you mean 15? 15 flying penguins? 15 what? If this is a prank, these people are committed. They are not messing around. Hello? What are you doing? Nobody's, nobody's on the second level. I think she's counting down. Ugh, I'm so out of shape. I'm looking from one end of the mall to the other. <laughs> Is anyone else walking? They haven't budged an inch. What is this girl going to do on the loudspeaker? Is she going to put us in timeout? I'm, uh, shiver me timbers. Oh, my timbers are shivered. I'm getting out of here. She's speeding up. She, she is speeding up. I don't even know where the exit is. What's going to happen when they stop counting down? They're all gone. They, they like vanish. Now, Robert is a video editor, and while everybody agrees that these videos are super creepy, this is just the first one, by the way, you can totally tell that the people in these videos have been edited in. However, because of this video, TikTok user Stick and Toke took to the platform to tell her own story about this mall, about the Crystal Mall in Waterford, Connecticut. And it is really creepy because it seems like Robert almost on accident depicted a nightmare that people from this area have been having about the mall for years. I've been going to this mall since the 90s. My biological mother worked at the Fredericks of Hollywood in this mall and I frequent it constantly as a child. My adoptive father did the plumbing for this mall. Almost every first date I had in high school was at the Crystal Mall. I've worked at both the Build-A-Bear and that H&M featured in that video. It's also where I met one of my best friends. Since childhood, I have had extremely lucid dreams of this mall. Like I can map the whole thing for you. And anytime I tell one of my local friends like, oh yeah, I have these lucid dreams of the Crystal Mall, before I even get to the mapping of the dream, which I'm gonna get to in this video because this is absurd. 
every single friend has cut me off and been like, oh yeah, the crystal ball dream and laid out the map and laid out the scenario before I finish saying what I need to. That H&M is always the spawn point. For every person I've talked to about this dream, it is always the spawn point. It's the H&M. If you try to go to the left of that H&M, the opposite side, where this person in the video is filming, there's always a fire, always a fire. You will die, you will die in the dream. Well, you know, I mean. And if you go down in this dream, and I'm telling you, I've talked to so many people about this and it is consistently the same thing. When you go down, there's people who look like mannequins. They do not have a face. They are often wearing suits. You do not approach these people. You do not say anything. They do not move unless you go down the stairs, which they're not stairs. It's a broken escalator and it's been that way for years. It's to the point that I love backrooms lore because I've had these lucid dreams for as long as I can remember. For this poster and people that they know, this is like a dream that people just have and people from this area are aware of this bizarre liminal space backrooms type lucid dream that you'll just have about this mall. And it's crazy because in his first video, Robert really seemed to capture the essence of that dream and it makes me wonder like did he hear about it too did he have the dream was that what the video was based off of there were two more videos in robert's little mini series of this mall as well at least at the time that i am recording this so i'm going to share those with you too because they both are pretty creepy this time the person on the intercom instructs mall goers not to move as the special sale is about to begin don't move. I'm at the mall again. Everyone stopped moving. Don't move, shoppers. This is announcement. Our 6 6.6% .6 of sale will commence in 60 seconds. What is she talking about? Get ready for deals that will stop your heart. With stop prices your so heart? Good, you think what? it would cost you your soul. Here at the Crystal Mall in Waterford, Connecticut. I'm going to go down there and check them out. You just have to find the stairs. Make your hair stand on end. I'm so glad you could join us for our flash sale this evening. What flash sale? I see that some of our shoppers have decided not that to comply with moving. our mandatory She's sale. She's moving. Enforcement will be deployed shortly. Enforcement? What what enforcement? I'm going back up. I'm getting out of here. In the meantime, stop moving. Do not observe your fellow shoppers. Prepare for the sale. What sale? Prepare what is this sale? sale. Why are they talking sale. about a sale? Prepare. I'm getting Prepare. out of here. I'm, I'm leaving. Nine, I'm going. Eight, this is so seven. creepy. The horror in these videos is used kind of sparingly, but also very effectively. Like just seeing that lady's neck jerk back and forth like that really creeped me out. And then as if Robert knew this, in the third video, the rules have been swapped. Instead of don't move, we now have move, don't stop. Move, don't stop. Why is everyone moving their head like that? Thank you all for complying. What is that sound? Oh, they got the Vecna special over here. Am I in a Stranger Things Walmart knockoff? Like if Stranger Things is Dr. Pepper, this is Dr. Thunder. We have a guest here tonight. And they're still doing the thing with their heads. What is going on? Robert, I see you lurking. And she just said my name. Is there anyone here that can tell me what's going on? There's nobody else in this mall. They're all at the other end of the mall. Oh no. Remember that participation in the ritual is mandatory for all shoppers. What ritual? This is like the lamest ritual ever. I'm trying to find the exit, but I'm not seeing any signs anywhere. Here at the Crystal Mall, we welcome visitors, but insubordination will not be tolerated. What does that sign say? Oh, Buffalo Wild Wings. That's at the entrance. I just have to go that way. The host is happy that you arrived tonight. What host? He'd like to address you personally. Hi, guys. I'm John Kinyonis, and this is a TV show called What Would You Do? And I thought cable television was dead. Bye-bye, Crystal Mall. So everyone participated in the ritual except for Robert. I wonder if they got, like, I don't know, like, Bath & Body Works coupons or something. Like, what was the prize here? Obviously, these are not, like, the scariest, most, like, jump-out-of-your-skin TikToks I've ever shown you, but I do think they're creepy in their own way. And more than anything, I really loved hearing Stick and Toke's story about lucid dreams revolving this mall and how Robert just like caught that energy and that vibe perfectly down to every single detail. 
in these dreams that this person has been having. I think it's really, really fascinating and creepy, and I don't know what's in the water in Waterford, Connecticut. In my last video on the scary side of TikTok, I included a few very heartwarming but also emotional TikToks, and I almost put this video in that video as well, but I was like, I probably made you guys cry enough in this. The next TikTok comes from user trying to vibe 33. Now, this person just set up their phone to capture a moment between their mother and them when they caught something so incredible on camera. Ready? Wait, let's make sure we're Alright, one, one, two, two three. Straight up. Oh. Alright, ready? One, one, two, three. <laughs> Whoa! I can get it back. Twist it. Woo! My dad. This video just really warms my heart. It was so sweet and I think so clearly a sign from this poster's father that he's still with them. It's sweet that the snow globe started playing as soon as the second one popped off as well. Like dad was just waiting for his cue to say happy new year too. Moving on, I'm not sure where this original video is from, but it was posted by official meme talk who knew that one of their videos would end up in a scary side of TikTok, but it's captioned when your system is too perfect. And basically in this, you see that a man is testing out a facial recognition software one so advanced that it knows his gender, his age range, as well as the emotion he's displaying on his face. But then the door to the room that he's in opens up and the system spots a face. It says gender woman, age 560 to 565, expression angry. And then you just see his expression change to shock. <laughs> so good. I've said before that I find things like doorbell cameras and a lot of the technology that we have now to be so interesting because we capture moments of paranormal activity on camera we never would have before. The next TikTok comes from Jessica Crow 795 and this is really fascinating. It found its way into like my tagged section on TikTok. People who thought it was creepy were just like mass tagging me in the comments. But I don't know how scary it actually is. So in this TikTok, a woman is filming her yard saying that she found some tracks in the snow, but that her cameras didn't catch anything when they were made. Y'all see this? This is the same size as my foot. You see this? Same size as my foot. I live in Oakville, Tennessee, which is right outside of Jackson, and this is going all the way around my neighbor's house. Now, this came from over here by my shed, y'all. Three marks. You see this? I said three. Sorry. Four marks. Four marks. And this right here is in my front yard. Now, there is no other marks anywhere, y'all, in my front yard. Anywhere. It's almost like whatever this was jump from my back yard over my house and landed right here in my front yard and then just disappeared. The tracks are massive and a lot of people in the comments were saying like that's a jackrabbit, that's a jackrabbit's prince. And I guess it kind of looks like a rabbit's foot, but they're huge. They're like the size of her own shoe. Can rabbits get that big? And then something I thought was really interesting was that somebody in the comment section of this video was like, I just saw a guy in Kentucky post a similar video saying he saw like the exact same kind of print and doesn't know what it is. And I tried my hardest to find that video to compare these like 
footprints, uh, but could not. I like searched everything I could think of and just couldn't find the video. So I guess I'm turning it over to you. Is there a perfectly reasonable, rational explanation for those footprints at that size? Or was some kind of cryptid strolling through this woman's yard? Since we're already outdoors in nature, let me show you this video from Dylan's GN. Now Dylan was out on a little stroll through the redwoods after partaking in what he refers to as portobellos when he sees a plant waving at him. The fern literally just kept wiggling at this man until he waved back at it. And I remember a period of time on TikTok where I could not get away from videos of people talking to plants. Like, were you guys on this side of TikTok when this happened? Am I just crazy and have a really weird algorithm? People were literally talking to trees like, hey, come closer to me if you understand me. And the tree would like do it. I feel like I maybe talked about a couple of those previously, but never went too deep into it because it kind of scared me. If the plants start becoming sentient, I have like nowhere to run, okay? Like not everything can be haunted. But a lot of people in the comment section of this were like, well, that's a fae trap if I've ever seen one. And I don't know if it's all that, but I think it's really interesting that it kept waving at him until he waved back. The next TikTok almost didn't make the cut, but I literally saw it this morning just scrolling through TikTok and was like, oh yeah, that that's a scary TikTok. It comes from Psycho Polly and I'm just gonna play it for ya. Wife is leaving, you know what that means. <laughs> The fog is coming, the fog, the fog is coming, is coming the fog, the fog is, is coming, the fog is coming, is coming, the fog is coming, the fog. You guys know how it is. The lady leaves the house, you got the space all to yourself, you're gonna play some video games, have some snacks, and then the fog is coming. And then the fog is coming. Now I really wanna watch the fog, but I just liked this TikTok and thought it was creepy and creative and sort of a lighthearted way to segue into the last chunk of this video. Because the final six TikToks of today's episode focus on one account in particular and a pair of haunted dolls that have taken the platform by storm. These videos all come from my bloody Galentine, who is such a cool creator. This was my first time stumbling across her, and I love her content. She's a paranormal investigator who got nearly 5 million views on this video unboxing a pair of cursed dolls. This box was just delivered and you can see the salt leaking out. The person that sent me this had a really bad time with what's in the box. Car trouble, business issues, bad luck, and worst of all, they've been known to move on their own. Guests in the home felt compelled to leave offerings and ask for permission to photograph them. They're coming from Connecticut where the previous owner had been warned before taking them in. After a bad experience, he passed them on to me. The dolls seemed to be causing one problem after another. Too many for it to be a coincidence. It was an emergency. The salt was used to protect him and create a barrier between their home and the dolls before sending them out. Taking them in might have been a mistake. These dolls are going to be in their own locked case and will be monitored 24-7 for movement. Hopefully we can find out what is haunting them and why they seem to be so angry. The number one thing we're going to keep in mind is to be respectful. We're going to ask permission even when we're moving them and when we're filming them. I love haunted dolls. I find them so interesting. I have a tiny little collection. I'm amassing an army of them myself. But this is something I've always been afraid of with haunted objects is like them turning sinister or making my life a living hell in some way, which is what these dolls were doing for their previous owner. This poster, whose name is Becky Ann, I'm gonna call her that, so I'm not just saying my bloody Galentine <laughs> over and over, but I think it's a great username. She is a paranormal investigator. She has other haunted items in her possession. And she felt that when she got this pair of dolls that they needed to be separate from everything else that she owned. So she went out of her way to get a cabinet to store and display display them in. However, it doesn't seem like the dolls were too fond of that idea. Update on the haunted cursed dolls we received just before Christmas, we decided they needed a special case that could be locked and kept far away from the other objects in the house because unlike other things that are in our home that are haunted, these do not have a friendly energy. And true to their word, the leg broke off the case, like just snapped right off. Um, we fixed it and we're gonna get them all set up again to be separate from the rest of the objects in the house. 
After the dolls were all set up in their new space, Becky Ann worked with a medium who goes by the medium Seth Browder on TikTok to communicate with the dolls. And what I find really interesting is that at this point, apparently the dolls have already learned to ring this bell that's on top of their display case, and they end up doing that to communicate and to confirm certain details throughout the entire reading. I'm just gonna say this, if he's getting stuff right, you guys can feel free to reach up and touch the bell above you. It seems like you've kind of figured that out. Absolutely did not like traveling. Bateman, um, it's a name Bateman just came up. This feels important to them. The light just flashed. Like it, it like got brighter when you said that. That's interesting. They were pissed because they were shoved into a box into an attic or a dark space for a long time and ignored. They are not to be sold, just so you know. Somebody did something to their heads after this was when they were found. There's something put in their head like. Both of their heads are open and, and it's uh, weird because the, the hat does conceal that. So you got that right. They don't feel like they're being dark or threatening to me or to you, but they do feel like this intention that was put into them was like a gimmick to make money off of them. And it's very dark what this person did to them. He like breathed into them. He was trying to give them life and they were upset because they weren't like that. They weren't made like that. I don't know why I felt like I was choking and why I almost taste like blood in my mouth. They're trying to expel the thing that is not original to them. No. It's like sewn into them. That makes me feel bad. It's almost like talking to two like entities at once. There's a good one, and there's one that was put in much later that's not good. The person who had them originally before me had a bunch of them, a horde of these dolls. And these were the last two left. <laughs> They're like, yes, we know. <laughs> I thought the bell was such a cool way to communicate with them. And it was really fascinating to see what they resonated with, what they were like, yes, this is correct, too. There's been three owners, just so you know. The first one was great. Miss the Bateman guy. Feels very like full of life. The mm -hmm. second one was not good, man. I'm going to say this is probably the 60s or 70s. They were stored for a really long time. Then he did something to them. There's a woman that calms them in your house. It was like a mother. She keeps like hushing and like, it's okay. Like very mom, motherly. Wow. <laughs> They're like, yes, we know her. <laughs> so this is interesting because there's two different people that are claiming that these dolls are moving on their own. They are saying they are not moving on their own. It's not them. It's this thing. Oh, like the dolls aren't actually coming to life and being animated. Correct. There's something else. Okay. That goes with them. Yep. It's wow. not, it's not them. They are not here to scare anybody. They that makes want sense. you to know. I feel like we think so many times. Thank you. Thank you for ringing the bell. We know that the dolls came into Becky Ann's possession somewhat suddenly. Somebody needed them out of their space immediately. Now she ends up doing a story time about this, explaining in more detail where these dolls came from. And I'm going to let her explain most of the story, but something I found really interesting is that these dolls were under the care of Ryan Matthew, who is on the TV show Oddities on the Travel Channel. Ryan is a known skeptic, and these dolls, the activity around them, fully not only convinced him that they were indeed haunted, but also that he was not equipped to handle them. The owner of the dolls wanted to keep them. He wanted to keep them in his collection until he realized the situation had got out of hand and he was no longer able to keep them in his house. I first talked to Ryan Matthew Cohen on November 16th. He brought the dolls home and he was photographing them for his upcoming book. After he moved the dolls, this is when the situation started to get out of control. 
they had their own spot in a room. He moved them to be photographed. At this point, nothing had happened. He does admit that he may have insulted them in some fashion. After he moved the dolls for the photos, he put them back where they were. Their mouths fell out. Now, if that isn't a creepy enough visual alone, things continued to happen. He repositioned them and he secured them so that that wouldn't happen again. Now, if you're familiar with his collection, he is a collector of antiquities, and I'm talking about things that are hundreds of years old and from all over the world, and of all things to affect him, these dolls. For me, that's super compelling as an investigator for somebody who has all of these things in his collection, but the dolls bother him. So he does collect hands, and he had just set up this antique pair of hands, and within a few hours of putting the dolls back and securing them, the hands come crashing down and broke one of their heads. He wasn't ready to let them go yet. They were very personal. He wrote about them in his book. He was allured by the idea. As someone who had been a skeptic his entire life, these dolls are now convincing him that the paranormal is something more than fiction. At midnight, a few weeks ago, I get a message that said, I need these dolls gone. It is an emergency. I said, absolutely, I will help you. I will help sever the connection with these dolls and you can send them my way. He explained to me that his car broke down in an event. Now, I can't imagine the stress of promoting an event and having to have your car jumped outside. They have another car, which is relatively new, and it started smoking on a trip to New Jersey. On the trip back from New Jersey, where they had to do a ride share, he messaged me, but he truly wanted to keep the dolls and he wanted to give them a good home. The only movement we've really seen is their mouths kind of seem to move and I think it's just like a sliding motion, but we are monitoring them. They are still very new. I know you guys are expecting a ton of activity. It's going to take time. I am safe. I am protecting myself. We do keep these in a different area. They are not in the office space with any other objects. The doll's backstory is really, really interesting. I just find it fascinating that like Ryan was clearly so invested in this pair of dolls, like used them in his book and like very clearly was quite creeped out by them, but just literally the activity got so nuts, he could not handle it. And I find it really fascinating that they're so much calmer, so much different in Becky Ann's care. That doesn't mean anything about the guy who had them before, of course. It just means that Becky Ann is familiar with spirit and she also has other items throughout her home that have attachments and hauntings. And these spirits also seem like they're kind of like calming down whatever is attached to these dolls, you know? And I was only gonna show you one more video. It was kind of this like overview of everything that happened since Becky Ann brought the dolls into her home. However, she says pretty early in the video that the dolls screamed at her and I was like, wait, what? Well, while doing an investigation with TikToker Kalani Ghost Hunter, they captured the dolls screaming at them in an EVP session. Can you tell us your name, please? I'm trying to show you some respect and we want to respect you even further by giving you a name. Can you tell us your name? Oh my God. <laughs> that clip is crazy. Like you literally hear something like shrieking at them. Oh my God, when they were just trying to get a name. But for our final TikTok, here's an overview of everything that my bloody Galentine, Becky Ann, has experienced so far with the dolls. Here's everything that's happened since I brought cursed dolls into my house. Spoiler, it gets pretty creepy. We went home for the holidays, so we were not here to experience anything for a few days. But when we came back, my friend Kalani came over and we tried to communicate with the dolls and get their name. They screamed at us. Other than that, it was relatively quiet and we sort of debunked their mouths opening and closing because they do have loose jaws. We wanted to make sure we weren't getting excited about false positives. We kept them in the hallway away from the other haunted objects just to make sure we were only focusing on them. My cat Widow tends to want to spend a lot of time staring down the hallway at them, but she does not go directly near them. We still don't know their name, unfortunately. They were not willing to communicate in that way or they didn't have the energy to do that. Personally, I haven't experienced any bad luck. I have been super respectful. They do need time to settle in. 
Two days ago, I noticed the closet doorway in the hallway was open, and it's one where you have to actually turn the knobs. I know that my six pound cat didn't open the store. Unfortunately, I didn't have the camera set up yet. I'm alone at this point. I texted Josh, who is away for work, and asked if he had done something recently to the closet that would have made the door not completely shut. After reshutting it, I was like, we need to get the camera on the dolls, just in case something like that were to happen again. It's been quiet for almost 24 hours until this happened. I got a notification that a person was detected. As you can see, there's no people in the footage. The only thing that happens is the top doll's mouth is closed. The light flickers, which if, if I walked by, I would get a notification that a person was by. I was by myself in another room with the lights on. The light flickers and when it turns back on, his mouth is open. I'm by myself, so we can say that maybe this was an electrical thing and a coincidence, but I'm still a little bit nervous. I find this so interesting and my personal like takeaway, I guess, is that I definitely see these dolls and feel uneasy by them, but your girl has not always been right about like spirits being attached to things. I bought this insanely expensive doll from like the 1800s. Her name is Miss Corn Crisp. Actually, do you guys want to meet her? I'll go get her. Okay, this is Miss Corn Crisp. <laughs> <laughs> this is Miss Corn Crisp. Um, she says, my name is Miss Corn Crisp on her body. And I think that she was a promotional item that came from cereal packaged back in the day, specifically from a cereal called Corn Crisp. I want to say they started making these in maybe the late 1800s and stopped by like 1902. So she came with the cereal as a piece of printed cloth. Uh, this is what she looks like, of course. And then they would have stuffed her with like cloth or whatever was laying around really. She is not in the best shape, but in terms of this doll, I did some research after. She's actually in pretty good shape considering she's like the original doll, probably with the original stuffing, but yep. Yeah. That's her. I saw this doll in my friend Kiko's museum, the Mystic Museum here in LA. And I was talking to one of the employees and they were like, we've had this doll forever. Nobody ever picks it up. And I'm just like, it's haunted, right? Like there's something attached to this. There's like this crazy energy in the Mystic Museum. I should take you guys there one day. I should, I should definitely do that. That'll be in my noggin. But I got the doll, brought her home, and nothing. She's never acted up, she's never done a singular thing, but my god is she iconic. So take my opinion, I guess, on these dolls with a grain of salt, and of course I only know what I'm seeing through a screen, but I do feel like there's like something with these dolls, and a lot of people think maybe they're siblings who were put into those dolls kind of against their will, who don't really want to be there. I find the whole thing really fascinating, really, really, really creepy and this isn't even the half of the story. You should definitely go check out Becky Ann's TikTok. I will have her, as always, with everybody else that I mentioned in these videos listed down below. And that is what was on my TikTok for you page this week. Those were the scary TikToks I wanted to share with you all. I really hope you all enjoyed. If you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. A big thank you to my subscribers who are members of the channel. Thank you so much for your support. If you want to become a channel member and get extra members exclusive perks like members only videos and members only updates and stuff, you can click that little join button somewhere around the screen. We would love to have you. An extra special thank you to my VIP loves for their continued and generous support of the channel. I love and appreciate you all very, very much. I love you all very much and I will see you in my next video. Bye!